Now, before I introduce this next story, I just want to say one thing. This was not my idea, but one day I showed our boss a photo of something I'd made at home. It was a design cut out of paper, and before I knew it, Jay Shefsky and cameraman Roy Allen were at my house shooting video of me while I made another one. So here is Jay with a look behind the scenes at what was, until now, a largely secret obsession. When I heard that Phil had a knack for paper cutting, I pictured the snowflakes that we used to make in grade school with scissors and folded paper. I wasn't expecting this. This is no snowflake. Phil designed and cut this seven-foot-long wall hanging for his son Anthony and Anthony's fiancée Maggie. Now he's starting a new piece. His hand-drawn design on top shows him where to cut, and the paper below is folded in half so the design will be symmetrical. Phil's paper cutting prowess first showed up when he was in his 20s. It was in his wife Anne's painting studio. And he picked up a piece of paper and he folded it two ways, four ways, in quarters, and he took the scissors and he started snipping, and he opened it out, and there were all of a sudden these birds and flowers and squirrels. He just does it. I would just start cutting, you know, maybe leaf forms. And then later on when we took a trip to Mexico with his mother, we found that it is in fact a Mexican folk art. Okay, see the, the shape of a bird emerging? There's decorative paper the, cutting in lots of cultures. In Mexico, it's called papel picado. The term papel picado literally means papel is paper, picado means with holes in it. <laughs> so, and you open it up. Traditionally, papel picado is made from tissue paper, and it's used to decorate celebrations. When Phil and Anne's daughter Maria was married in Mexico in 2011, Phil designed and cut the banners. With Mexican papel picado, it's typically made out of tissue paper, so it's very transient, and that's supposed to be part of, it's a metaphor that, uh, that beautiful things are transient, that life is transient. Now, instead of paper, Phil uses Tyvek, the super strong building material that cuts easily but won't tear on its own. Well, you don't want to put all the, that work into no, this. No, exactly. I don't want it to be transient. <laughs> I wanted it to be something that was lasting, and so this, this really should last uh, a very long time. Phil says it took him about 30 hours to design this banner, and then 15 to 20 hours to cut it. He says the painstaking detail takes a certain kind of personality. My temperament is suited really to, to sort of long-term agony. <laughs> I can put up with unpleasantness, quite a bit of it. And this is not completely fun. I mean, it is really demanding and time-consuming. Phil's designs are mostly drawn from nature. This new piece features birds and flowers, and this one, insects and leaves. You know, when you design this, it seems like it's got to support its own weight, kind of, right? Bingo. The design elements also have to work as sort of architecture in that everything's got to be connected because if, it's, if there's an, a big element that's not connected, mm -hmm. it'll start it'll to droop, over. it'll flop over. And Phil says that one wrong cut can ruin that architecture. So you could cut this entire thing down to the bottom and on your last cut. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> depending on where that last cut went, uh, depending on where it was in the design and where it was in terms of holding, connecting other elements together, yeah, I could wreck it. Okay, so uh, this represents about six hours of work since we last saw. I stopped back a few days later. No bad cuts so far and significant yeah, progress. And uh, I'm pleased with it. It has a lacy kind of character, mm -hmm. uh, which is what I was after. Phil says that he didn't start doing paper cuts because of the Mexican tradition. But looking around his home workshop, tradition and family are everywhere. My mom used to embroider and crochet, and she would crochet these flowers and these birds and, and plants and things into her designs. I, I honestly think maybe it was the influence of watching my mother embroider and crochet the same kinds of forms that I'm doing now. I think that's where it came from. 
and creating new family traditions and even heirlooms seems to be part of what drives him now. There is a part of me that wants to leave something that's potentially of beauty around after, after I'm gone. I think this, this piece made of this material you know, really could last for a very long time and that pleases me to know that something that I made, uh, something tangible, uh, might be in existence after I'm long gone. For Chicago Tonight, this is Jay Shefsky.